Tip Trace. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Trace, the show where I analyse and deconstruct inspiring pieces of artwork. And today we're going to be taking a look at a piece by Mohamed Samir, a really, really cool Instagram designer who works with typography a lot and really cool gradient colours. Um, well worth checking out, it's Mohamed Samir Design on Instagram. And the piece that we're going to be looking at today is this incredible outdoor spaces indoors uh, illustration that he's done here. Um, there's a few things I really love about this i think it was created for some kind of mall installation in his home city um what we're going to do is take a look at how it was made we're going to break it down to its core elements and we're going to look at building our own version of it so let's jump right into the analysis part one analysis Okay, so the first thing that I really love about this is the background gradient. But what I especially love about it is how it interacts with the foreground elements here, the main focus of the design. Um, the, the tree that he's used here has had an overlay put on it that sort of saturates all of the color and detail out and sort of cuts off the bottom end of the black so it looks a little bit faded. And that helps it sort of integrate with the background gradient a little bit better whilst also still retaining the fact that it is its own element and, and is the core focus of the design. So I'm just going to put here gradient and interaction with the faded tree. Okay, that's the first thing that I really love. The second thing that I love are these geometric shapes that are going over the top and how they slice off the edge of these letters here. Sometimes it does cut them, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and especially with this little bit of shading that's been added on top of there as well, the little bit of drop shadow. Um, so I'm just going to put uh, geometric shapes. Oops, put that on a new line. Um, and cutoffs. Okay. Uh, finally, I'm gonna, I say this a lot inside of Tip Trace, but the other thing that I really love is the um, mosaic balance of all these little circular elements down here. Now, I've talked about mosaic balance a lot, but if you don't know what it is, you can check out my basic for beginners series um, where I talk about basic compositional theory. Uh, and you can uh, sort of dive right into that and I'll tell you all about the different kinds of visual balance and weighting and things like that that we're going to talk about in this series, but perhaps not go into as much detail in. Um, okay, so for that, I'm just going to put mosaic mosaic balance and those are the three things that I love about this design um, that's pretty much all that's there so I love everything about it um, having said that usually what we do is we deconstruct and we rebuild um, the artwork exactly however if you've been following along with tip trace or if you haven't if this is your first episode this is also okay um, what we're going to do this time around is something a little bit different we're going to try to evolve as designers now okay so when you're very new it's very common to sort of copy designs exactly in order to understand how they work and we're going to do that we're going to deconstruct this and we're going to break it down to its core elements and we're going to figure out how it works however we're going to start to evolve and we're going to create our own artwork based off of this design and you can actually see that inside of photoshop i've already done that so you can see that between these two this is the same core elements the same theories that take place um, but it's been using our own assets and our own ideas so we actually have to engage and think about this and that's the next logical step to becoming a good designer at first you copy things then you start to evolve and make them your own and then you start to have your own original ideas and other people start copying you <laughs> um, so let's just jump right into the deconstruction and we'll figure out how this thing was made part two deconstruction Okay, so I've loaded both designs up in Photoshop now. You can see the original here and my recreation here. We're basically going to build this again. The first thing you're going to need to do, however, before you start creating a canvas inside Photoshop is understanding what assets you're going to need. Everything here is created inside of Photoshop apart from the picture of the tree. That's an asset that you have to go away and get. Now, I'm not sponsored by these guys. I just think they're great. Um, go to pexels.com, search for the word tree, and hundreds and hundreds of different versions are going to come up. I think I actually got mine from Pexels you might see it in the list here somewhere uh, I think I use this one actually black horse besides green leaf tree take that download it and pop it into a composition however what size composition do you need let's find out Go to file and new. The one I used was an A4 print version of a canvas. Okay. Now this is for several reasons. One, it gives us a nice high DPI. We've know we've got a massive image, um, five, six thousand pixels wide or something, so we can work in something that large. Secondly, it aligns with some other little concepts that I'm working on at the moment, different projects. Um, and thirdly, it gives us a lot of space to work with. Uh, it can be 72 DPI, 920, 1080, whatever you want, really. I like working in um, print because I tend to print some of these. 
So I'm going to hit create and that's going to open up our canvas here. The first thing you're going to need to do then is go and find those assets. So I've downloaded them, put them in this tip trace folder. You can see that I've had a couple of different trees here, but I am going to stick with this one here. Click and drag that onto your canvas and you can scale it up however you like. Just hit enter to place that. So we need to now separate this tree from the background. Okay, that's actually quite simple to do. There's several different ways you're going to do it. We're going to do it using masks um, and a combination of the quick select and color select tools. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, one of the things that you can do is hit select color range and then you can sample the sky and sort of increase and decrease until you get the fuzziness that you want. So anything that is white here is going to disappear. Anything that is gray is going to be semi disappeared. Anything that is black is going to be fully there. OK, and you can actually start adding using the color um, eyedropper different portions to this um, mask here. So I'm going to do that and hit OK. Then I'm going to come down here and apply a mask to it. Now, that's done the exact opposite of what we want. So we're going to hit Control Shift I. I'm sorry, just Control I to invert that. And then you can see that most of the background is now gone, but it's also got rid of most of the tree here as well. That's very easy to fix. What we can just come to do is come back in here with a brush, make sure it's a relatively hard brush um, with a bit of soft edging and make sure that you've got a uh, white foreground color set and you can just bring back in some of that detail in the center of the tree here, okay? Leaving, of course, a little ring around the edge so that you don't... Um, bring back the sky in, which obviously you don't want to do. Um, and that is one way to color sample. Now it gets a little bit tricky around the edges here, but you might want these. We're going to be fading it anyway, so it's actually not super, super important. Um, then you can just go around and if you hit X again to invert those, you can tidy up the edges of your image and make sure that there's no overlapping stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to come in and do that. Oops, did too much there. So <laughs> get rid of that one. Okay. Now that is one way of color sampling. You can see it works pretty well. Sometimes there's a few hard edges or bits that you've messed up. Um, sometimes there's bits which faded, which you don't want to be faded. Uh, another way of doing it is with the quick select or magic wand tool. Um, that can be quite good. Uh, really, you just got to find the way, the one that works for you and roll with that. Okay, there's no, there's no hard and fast rules of how to do it. So I'm just going to bring back in this a little bit and then I'll do a um, comparison version with a different technique to show you the different um, styles. So that works quite well. Let's just hide this for now. And I'm going to bring back in the same image again. But this time I'm going to use my magic wand tool to start selecting areas. Now you can increase or decrease the tolerance if you find that it's not working for you. But this seems to work pretty well. This is on a tolerance of 50 at the moment. We can start to bring all of that in. Now that's pretty, pretty close actually. Uh, I think I'll be using this method. What we can do now with that selection in place is we can just hit the mask tool quickly and it will cut it out. Control I will invert that and leave you with the rest of the tree. Now that is much neater, okay? I think I'll be using this method because all I need to do now is come through. Maybe you want to tidy up some of these bits over here, but that's okay, you can do that afterwards. Um, just come in with the brush and just get rid of all this stuff that you don't need. Uh, I'm gonna leave the trunk for a minute though because I am going to um, uh, get rid of these fence posts over the front of the uh, trunk there. So I'm just going to get rid of all this excess stuff that I don't need. Bring back this a little bit. Over here, I'm just going to grab my pen tool and I'm just going to roughly draw around some of these leaves. It doesn't have to be super accurate, just as long as it's not a straight edge. Okay. And then I might as well come in and grab actually the rest of this now. I'm going to go up the edge of this tree trunk here, like so. Uh, yeah, that looks all right. And we're going to bring this over like that. Hit make selection with a right click there. And you can paint this out. Now, I'm not just going slowly in this series. Um, this isn't for sort of absolute beginners. Uh, if you don't know how to use Photoshop uh, like this, you can check out my intro to Photoshop series that I've just recently released on the channel, actually. That will get you the, to grips with the basics of creating stuff inside of Photoshop, using all the different tools, that sort of thing. If you're struggling to follow along, that's fine. Just go and check out that series first of all, and then come back to this one. You've got all the time in the world. Uh, there's no reason to rush. Okay, so I'm just going to select all of this bit, get rid of it all. Maybe I'll just come in on and just make a neat cut off there. Maybe at an angle. 
make selection and I'm just going to paint all of this out okay so we've got rid of most of that now all these little blue bits here and the sort of few blue parts up here you can fix that with the magic wand tool as well so you can just come in and select those or if you wanted to you could again select color range and just pick with a lower tolerance one of those areas you'll realize it'll get all of that down there as well hit OK, but that will create a mask when you do that, its own individual mask, okay? So you might want to do is duplicate this layer. Yep. Um, come in with the color select tool, color range, hit OK. That's going to select that layer, then you can go back to your original mask layer here and start painting that out, okay? Um, oops, excuse me, make sure I'm on the right layer here. There we go, start painting all this out. Like so. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way is, like I said, with the magic wand tool. So we'll just go back here in the history and we'll start magic wanding some of this out. I prefer using the magic wand. Some people prefer using color range. There's a whole array of techniques for doing the same thing, as, as well you know, in, um, in Photoshop, in all of the Adobe software, really. A uh, million ways to do the same thing. So there we go, just going to grab all of those and we're going to start painting them out. Doesn't matter actually too much whether it's super, super neat because um, we're going to be fading this and messing with the colors anyway. So I'm going to call that a fairly good job, right? So I'm going to remove that other one. We don't need that anymore. And the first thing I'm going to do now is get rid of these parts on the tree trunk here. So we're going to come in, get rid of these fence parts. First step for doing that is to duplicate the layer and rasterize it with a right click so right click and rasterize layer okay we can then if you want to apply the layer mask it doesn't matter so uh, right click on that layer mask and hit apply uh, and then just for the sake of neatness and keeping your file sizes small you can just select everything that is in the trunk and just delete it so all we're left with is this little bit of trunk here now this is because we're going to start using um our clone stamp tool here. So we're going to grab the clone stamp tool. Uh, we're going to control click on the thumbnail of this layer so that we can get an outline of it. And then we're going to hold down alt and sample the tree. Then when we release it and start um, drawing, it's going to sample those colors. So you can see that when you click and draw, there's a little cross there. And wherever that cross is, that's where you're painting uh, below it, essentially. So if I select down here, I could paint up like that. Now this takes a little bit of doing, but as you can see, you can sort of copy and paste the bark of this tree a little bit and get rid of these fence posts, like so. There you go. Let's deselect that. In fact, I might just uh, come through with the pen tool again and just neaten up that edge a little bit. Make selection, delete just because we've got a little bit of the actual fence posts poking out of the side of the tree trunk there, which we don't want. Make selection, delete. Okay, bring in your other layer underneath. Um, control click that and go to your mask. Invert it, and then you can paint out the uh, remainders of those little tree trunks there. Oops, excuse me, I went a bit too far. Get rid of the fence posts and then bring that back in like so. Okay, we now uh, have a tree with a fence removed from the trunk. We're ready to go. The next step then is to bring in the gradient background and start to fade this so that we um, start to replicate the other piece of artwork. So we've got the gradient background here and we've got the little faded tree. Now you can see in this version, um, the gradient's a little bit different, the tree's a little bit different, but that's fine. It's the same basic concept, it's the same basic understanding. Okay, so step one is to bring in the background. To do that, we're gonna create a rectangle. We're gonna come up here to our fill and we're gonna choose gradient. And we're just gonna click and drag and then use control T to position this so that it fills our canvas. Obviously we want that to be on the bottom below everything as well. Okay, so we're just gonna delete that background layer. From there, we're gonna go up to our gradient here and start to choose a few different colors. Instead of black and white, we're gonna want this lovely green. So we're gonna pick a nice sort of semi-bold, semi-foresty green for the bottom here. And we're gonna pick a nice warm yellow for the top. Maybe something like, something like that. Um, that looks nice. 
Let's make that green a little bit more yellowy. And a little bit darker. There we go. That's quite a nice background gradient. It might be a bit stronger than the others. Let's take a look. Yeah, a little bit stronger. Maybe we'll bring that back down a bit so it's not so saturated. Um, either way, I think it's going to look pretty good. And the next step then is to... Um, create a gradient overlay on this tree in order to fade it into the background a little bit. The first step for doing that is to group both of these trees together so that we've got them in a nice neat folder to which we can apply an effect. Okay, so we're going to go over to our layer style here and we're going to choose gradient overlay and that's going to fill our tree with a gradient. Now, it's actually already set up in the way that I did it last time because it's the last thing I did, but yours will probably look something like this when you start. Okay, um... Something like that, uh, which isn't necessarily going to look very good. OK, now in the original piece of artwork, if we bring that back up, uh, tab suspended by the great suspender. That's a good plugin. You should get that. Um, you'll notice that it's sort of this faded purple with the blacks cut off a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to choose a nice dark purple. Maybe something like this. Go into something like this, maybe. And what you're looking for here is this sort of faded, easygoing purple that matches this sort of yellow, because purple and yellow are complementary towards each other. Um, so you don't want it too oversaturated. You don't want the original one too dark. Um, it's kind of up to you. Obviously, it's going to depend on the image that you're using as well. But when you do that, you're going to lose a lot of the information from that tree, a lot of the, um, what's the word, like the detail, essentially. And you want to bring that back a little bit. So you're going to cycle through a few of your sections here. And for me, the one that I think looks best in this particular situation is exclusive, um, which is near the bottom. Exclusion, rather. There you go. Uh, and what this does is it takes those purples and cuts them out of anything that's below it, meaning that you get this nice little faded look here. Um, it still looks a little bit floaty. So we're going to try and fix that by coming through and sort of bringing some of the darkness back in maybe on this one we'll just saturate it up just a little bit more that looks good to me and of course you can go around and play with the opacity of this layer as well bringing it up and that's just going to basically increase and decrease the saturation of the purple on this exclusion style layer style okay so maybe around 70 which is where it was before let's hit okay on that Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is create a little curve just to cut off some of this back and bring back in some of the higher details. To do that, we're going to come over here to our uh, adjustment layers and choose, oops, excuse me, not levels. Uh, we're going to choose curves. Now, if I were to start messing with this, you'll notice that it messes with the entire picture. That's not what we actually want in this case. We only want it to mess with the tree. To do that, you just need to hold Alt and hover your mouse over the gap between those two layers, between the trees folder and the curves folder. If you click with the little box and the drop down arrow, that means that this curve is only then going to be applied to the to the uh, layer or group directly below it, uh, meaning it's not going to be applied, thankfully, to the background as well. All we're going to do for this one is we're just going to bring those blacks in a little bit, fade off the very dark black, and we're just going to bring back in some of the highlights. And you can see there that all that does is it just crunches it just a little bit. Uh, maybe we can push that over this way. Maybe we can bring it up just a little bit further. And what that does is it allows the green and the yellow to shine through at the brighter highlights a little bit more, which sort of seats that tree into the image. Uh, as far as the tree goes, that's it. If you wanted to, you can group those into a folder as well, so you're not going to start messing around with them and call it tree. Next up is to start creating the geometric shapes and the uh, text over the top. So in the original design, it was outdoor spaces indoors because that was relevant to the installation. Uh, in my design, it was natural worlds, human constructs. Uh, let's do something new this time around. Let's grab our text tool um, and let's figure something out. Let's have um, broken, mm, broken branches, happy, uh, 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 um, happy homes. I don't know what that means. That's just words. Um, <laughs> is that any good? I feel like when you're climbing trees as a kid, that sort of feeling, you know. Um, cool, let's work with that. I don't know if it's any good or not. 
So what we want to do is just separate all of that text out onto its own layer here and scale it up a little bit maybe and bring it into the middle. Let's make it all white as well so we know what we're working with. Now, this sort of portion is basically up to you. You notice in the original, it's sort of centered aligned, um, but the comma sort of throws off the weighting a little bit. In this one, I've sort of made it a little bit more abstract to follow the shape of the tree. Um, it's completely up to you. For this one, I think I might push this over here a little bit um, and maybe push over. Let's push all of this over a touch and bring that back a bit. Then we can sort of position this down on the bottom and we can have some other elements over here to, to sort of realign that balance of weighting visually. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Um, let's just bring it up like so and leave it there. That seems good to me. Now, before we do anything else with this, it's best to create the geometrical lines so that we know what we're working with. Now, you can either do that with the line tool um, underneath here, like so, and start clicking and dragging these around. Uh, I find for this particular case, because uh, it means you have to think about it more, uh, I'm going to use the pen tool and use the brush as well. So I'm going to go over to my brush. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to make sure that it's wicked hard, and I'm going to make sure that it's about... 15 pixels thick, no, a bit, bit smaller than that. Let's have it be 10 pixels thick. Yeah, that looks good, okay. So, a new fresh layer then with a white paintbrush. And with the pen tool selected, we're just gonna start thinking about the balance and the weighting of this composition so far. So the moment it's fairly well balanced um, in the center, we can sort of select all of this content here and we can sort of make it sure that it's visually aligned, like so. And then when you start putting all these little ge ge different geometric lines in, um, it's gonna start messing with that visual balancing. Now, the, the first one to start off with, it just makes sense, is to cover up this cut off in the, in the base of the tree here. So I'm gonna zoom right in and I'm gonna choose just somewhere, maybe maybe here. And I'm going to bring over the edge of my line so that it covers up the bottom of that tree. Okay. And now I'm just going to draw a triangle. I'm going to try and figure out uh, the weighting of that triangle. Um, its overall sort of color and line thickness, things like that, is going to influence the visual weighting of the design. Um, it's already quite central, so I can start messing around with this pretty strongly, actually. Maybe I can come up like so. Maybe this could be a little bit of a trapezoid, actually. We could have it come down like this and then rejoin the line there. That seems like a good way to start. So I'm going to right click and choose stroke path. I'm going to choose brush, but not simulate pressure. And that's just going to create a really nice, neat line here. OK, already you can see that that's thrown off the weighting of this visual balance a little bit. But that's OK, because we can start adding extra geometric shapes that throw it right back again. Now, in the original, there were sort of several that spurred out of one place, some that went behind. Uh, I sort of did that in the new one as well. Um, but what we're going to do for this one is the same thing, but we're going to worry about the bits that go behind later. We're just going to get those basic shapes in first, okay? So let's just start doing that. Let's zoom in and get roughly in the middle of this line here. And maybe come up like this. Maybe let's just have this one come out quite far. And then come across to maybe the middle. Bearing in mind that we're cutting through quite a bit of text there, but that's okay. Let's stroke that and see what that looks like. Yeah, not bad. I quite like that. Uh, I think it needs something coming up here, maybe something coming out the bottom. So where this path crosses here, I'm just going to bring that over. Maybe let's get that a bit more accurate. I'm going to bring that over to here. And then down, maybe like this and back up again. OK, now this is something you really just have to feel out, see what's going to work in your particular design. Um, I messed that up a little bit there. It didn't quite line up with the corner. So I'm just going to do that with a bit more accuracy. And then maybe bring it down like so. And then back up here like so. Yeah, that's nicer. OK, not too bad. Let's take this whole thing and rotate it a little bit and we can sort of realign the edge of that uh, stroke here with the tree like this so let's take the tree and we can just shimmy that down a little bit like so and we can go into this uh, actual tree here where the trunk is 
and we can mask out just that little corner so we can take our brush and we can just mask out that little bit and mask out that little bit like that just so that it's not overlapping that looks not too bad i think it needs a little bit of an extra spike up there so let's go and add that in let's just close off our tree so we're not getting confused make sure that our brush is back at the same so it's still a size 10 and we can go back to our pen here and let's just have from here coming out like so and connecting there like that yeah that looks okay i'm pretty happy with that actually um good that's good we've now got to decide how that's going to interact with the text how that's going to uh, interact with the tree behind it as well and the easiest way to do that believe it or not is to just apply a mask to this layer and just wing it see what you like um, if you go down and twirl down your tree layers and you choose the mask of that original um, tree layer by control clicking it you can then increase your brush size and you'll be able to notice that you can hide the certain lines that are overlapping with a tree so you can choose the ones that you want to hide and choose the ones that you want to keep I think I want to hide these portions here and I want to hide this line however I don't want to hide that line going across the middle so I'm just going to select all of this I'm going to go right up to where these two lines overlap and I'm just going to paint that out a little bit and paint that out a little bit okay get rid of all this extra stuff here that's looking all right to be honest maybe we want this to go behind the trunk but in front of the leaves yeah that looks quite cool okay so hidden lines wise i'm quite happy with that now we need to choose which parts of these letters are going to be sliced off in the same way that these design is here now it's a lot less subtle here it's only done on a couple um, some of these are behind the leaves of the trees as well so we can do that um, but it's really just up to you how how hard you do this i think it looks quite cool if you if you cut off quite a lot of this actually so to do this you have to control click the layer uh, of the actual lines the geometric shapes themselves okay and then invert them control shift i that inverts your selection so that everything but those white lines are selected okay from there you go down to your text layer and you give a mask to that and then using the brush tool if you be carefully because you can obviously go over to both sides of it you can just start to remove and erase some of the um, overlapping lines that you've got there okay okay so removing a section of letters like that um, you might have to accidentally if you're like me bring back some of the text here that you may have accidentally removed so I'm just gonna fix that and then oops excuse me going to unpaint that one again like so okay uh, let's get rid of this bottom of the K here that's quite a nice little subtle bit to remove like so maybe we can get rid of the bottom of the o as well but leave the r in that might look nice yeah you can still read that now because this line has been removed and is behind the tree it doesn't make sense to remove any of those elements however it might look quite good to remove the top of this e uh you could even try removing the bottom of this s although i think that might be a bit much let's see yeah that's a bit much let's remove the top of this s as well then like so and the rest don't really overlap so let's hit control d to remove that and you can see that looks quite cool actually i'm pretty happy with that um i'm not sure if i like the r so i'm just going to do the same thing this time around maybe get rid of oh maybe let's just get rid of one leg of the r yeah that is cool i like that a lot actually okay great so the next step then is to choose the little leaves that shine through um that's easy to do as well select the mask for the tree invert that as well and go back to making sure that your text layer mask is selected and it's the same sort of thing you can either hide oops excuse me i'm on the wrong one there Control shift i you can either hide bits of the tree like this or show bits of the tree yeah so i'm going to hide the text here that overlaps that bit of the s and here as well that does the same thing and this is you've got to really use a bit of a light hand so here for example it might be nice if we remove that part of the n and then if we shift it again and brought in some of the branches here but bringing in the branches here isn't going to look good yes yeah? so you've just got to make sure you're following the edge of the shape there a little bit okay um let's do maybe mm. no let's leave that be alone that looks a bit 
too crazy. Uh, and let's leave the rest of it alone as well. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do a little something with this I, uh, this Y down here. Can we bring in? Now this could work if you if you took your pen tool, okay, and sort of went across all these leaves and chose a bit like that. But I think it would be nicer if we shifted this and hid the excess bit of that Y like so. Yeah, that's nice actually. I quite like that. Maybe not. Maybe I've changed my mind. Let's leave it like that. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with those hidden letters there. Now, another thing that he did was um, have little subtle gradients on the letters, on some of the letters that overlap, and we can do that as well. That's really easy to do. You now just control click uh, your text layer, okay, like so, and you create a new layer underneath the uh, above the text but underneath your lines yeah then you can just get a nice soft brush and then if you alt control click the um uh line layer on top that subtracts that selection from your um live selection essentially and then with the brush tool on your new layer nice and soft you can come in with a nice light gray and a really soft brush, excuse me, uh, and you can start painting in a few little shadows. Now it's going to appear in this bit, but that's okay because you can just mask that out again. The important thing is that it's not appearing on the line where your uh, geometric shape crosses your text. So you can shrink this down a little bit, come in with a bit of shading there, okay? We'll come back and worry about that in a minute, but we can do the same thing here. Okay, you might not want to do it on all of them. Maybe it'll look good, maybe it won't. Mm. Maybe we can try it on all of these. Like so. Because they don't actually overlap too much, so it might look alright. So let's grab these and come through. And come through, and come through. Like that. Maybe a bit of a shadow on that E. Like so. And that is it. So now, all you need to do is um, deselect that layer. Um, control click the layer of your new shadows okay and if you actually deselect that for a second you can see quite easily where that stuff has come in um, so all you need to do is find the layer that is uh, the offending layer with the shadows and just start painting those out a little bit so we can paint out that fully um, with the mask that's not removing it uh, we can do the same thing here so apply a mask to that and because you're doing it now with a hard brush, like so, um, you're not going to get any problems with sort of ghostly, ghostly shapes on there. So you can just come through and remove all of those. Now, that's probably a quicker way to do it. Um, if you know one, let me know. But for the sake of actually getting it done, this seems to work well for me. So get rid of all of this. Do the same here. Like so. Okay. There you go, happy with that, that looks pretty cool. Okay, so the final thing that we need to do then is to create this cool little thing in the background and create some of these mosaic dots here. Um, other than that though, I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, it is a little bit off balance now that we've added all those elements in, but what I'm gonna do is add the rest of the mosaic balance elements in, add some of the background elements in, and then we're gonna center the piece finally once we've actually got all of our elements in place. Okay, so let's do the big element first that we know that we're working with something um, that's going to have a lot of control over our image because there's no point getting the mosaic balance all the little bits working if we're then going to add in a huge block square in the background. Uh, in the original design, this is a nice circle with a sort of a dash line. In this one here, it's a square with these kind of little marching ants things. Um, let's try a triangle on this one. Why not? Uh, I think it's already set up to be a triangle on my polygon tool, which it is. Uh, if it isn't for you though, you just need to come down here. It might be on say like five sides or something uh, and you'll get like a pentagon like that. All you need to do is just reduce it to three up there in the top. Okay, let's take our triangle here uh, and let's give it a fill of a pattern first of all. Okay, now there's all sorts of different patterns you can try in here. I'm going to pick, um, let's pick this one and scale up a bit, see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a nice little marching ants looking thing here. Um, and I'm going to push that behind everything. Okay, bearing in mind that if I keep it inside this group, then it's going to apply the curves layer um, adjustment to that to that triangle as well. So I need to make sure it's pushed outside of that group along the bottom. Yep, there's the difference. You can see it. Um, and let's sort of start making this work. Maybe we'll scale it up a little bit. 
maybe we'll rotate it around a little bit to counterbalance some of that geometric lines in the background. Maybe we'll have the fat end up there like that. Yeah, that looks quite good. Let's have him come down like so. Maybe actually we could have it line up with the bottom line of that shape there. That looks quite cool. Apart from I don't like the white at all, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to switch through a few of my modes to see what I like most. Probably going to be darken or multiply. Darken looks quite good, but let's just flick through and see. Um, ooh, darker color looks good as well. Let's have darker color. Uh, just takes some of the oops, excuse me, visual weight out of that a little bit, makes it a bit less imposing, and we can fix it over like that. Cool. Let's group all of this stuff together and center it visually in the frame, like so. The last little thing we need to do then are all of our tiny little circles. Now this is nice and easy. You just grab your your circle tool, obviously, make a circle that you want, and pick the color that you want in it. I'm just going to go for straight white. Like so, okay. That might be a bit big. So we're gonna shrink him down to about 30 pixels or so. And then this is the part where you really just need to have sort of an eye for this sort of thing. Um, you need to, with your image as a whole, just go through and start placing in areas that look a little bit empty. You can hit Control J to duplicate it. Don't put them too near any corners or in too many regulated spots because they start to look um, purposeful rather than chaotic. And once you're happy with that sort of size, you could maybe shrink down and do a smaller one, maybe 12 pixels in size, and just get a few of those out. Now, it might be worth scattering some of these far away, scattering some of them close to the trees. Um, completely up to you here. You just sort of got to eyeball it a little bit until, oops, excuse me, until you um, get something that you're happy with. So try clustering a couple um, with larger elements, try clustering a few away from larger elements and that sort of thing. Um, and let's bring maybe all of that back in, like so. Um, let's group all of those ellipses together because I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. And I might just try a quick extra smaller triangle to help balance off just this bottom here that's looking a bit unhappy like so yeah that looks all right to me okay let's take all of our stuff here and just tweak him a little bit until we're happy with the layout okay great i think that is it so let's move on to step three and compare the two and see what we came up with part three conclusions Okay, so this time around, we've actually got three different versions of the artwork um, that we've created. We've got the original one here in the middle. We've got the one that I created for demonstration purposes. And then we've got the one that we've created together here. Now, as you can see, these are all using the same principles and the same techniques, but they're our own pieces of artwork. Okay, um, we've taken the inspiration from the original. And yes, it is, you know, pretty much a blatant copy. But we've used our mind and our brains and our creative juices to put this together rather than just taking somebody else's piece of artwork and copying it. And that is the sort of next sort of step as a designer, as you're getting started. It should be to take influences. Obviously, if this is commercial work, then absolutely don't. But in case of just learning and growing and getting better, this is absolutely a very valid thing to do. Um, and as you can see, the results that you can do are actually quite nice. You can learn things uh, and learn to do things that you perhaps wouldn't have done or tried before. Um, but yeah. Have a play, have a think, see what you can come up with. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know if you do want more tip trace or if you want to see them in different formats, maybe shorter, longer, more for beginners, more for advanced users. Give it a go, give it a try, see what happens. And if you find any other inspiring artwork and you want to know how it was made, then do send it along to me, either to my email, just info at tiptup.xyz or perhaps on the Discord or even in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed tip trace and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.